So hi guys, in this session we will see about snapping tool and then motion trials, okay, creating motion trials and all. So basically in Maya we have that uh, snapping options, right? We used to press uh, V, uh, C and X for grid snapping and vertex snapping and then control vertex snapping like that. So the same option can be available over here but we are using one more tool like a cruiser, okay? So by using the cruiser we can achieve all those uh, stuffs. Um, so first of all, I will explain you what is this cruiser and all. So here we can find it out in the toolbox over here, the left side, the uh, circle with the red dots or white dots. Just click on that one. So it will be like uh, by default it will be there in the grid. So after selecting that one, the cruiser will get activated. Okay. So if I, now if I click anywhere on the 3D space, there it can be moved. Okay. So by using this cruiser, uh, we are just going to snap. Uh, our objects over and all. Okay, fine. Now I'm just uh, keeping my cursor over here somewhere in this location. I uh, just want to snap this cube to uh, this cursor. Okay, and basically the cursor doesn't have any transformation nodes. It's like a dummy object. Okay, no need to worry about like whether it will get keyed or not like that. So it's a dummy object. No keys and all nothing. It's like a dummy object. Okay, fine. So now selecting the uh, object which we are want to move it over there. To the cursor location and then press the shift yes okay so it will pop up your uh, snap menus over here so i'm just going to give like selection to cursor so right now our cube got selected so if i click on that one that cube will move to this cursor location okay so it's just going to give a selection to cursor see my cube got snapped to that uh, cursor over there okay and the same technique and we can use it for moving the cursor also. Suppose if I want the cursor back to this uh, location origin over here, you can press the shift S and then go for uh, uh, selection, sorry, cursor to weld origin. So if you click on that one, the cursor will come back to the 0, 0, 0 position over here. Okay, suppose in case if I want to uh, uh, use any one of these edges, okay, I just want to snap this cursor to any one of these edges. So how to do that? Uh, just uh, select that object and then uh, go for edit mode so now we will get a uh, vertex right so i'm just selecting uh, this corner vertex over here so i just want the cursor to be snapped to this position over here. same shift and s key and then go for uh, cursor to select so if i do that one see automatically the cursor got snapped to this vertex over here. so this kind of technique it will be very helpful while doing the rivet constraint kind of thing. so like that we can use the uh, cursor and then uh, you can use that uh, snap menu over here. By using the shift and S key, it will pop up that uh, uh, floating menu over here. Or else you can go for uh, just selecting the object mode and go for this object snap menu over here. So you will get an access to these menus over here. And one more technique is like uh, you can select that object and you can press F3 key. Okay, so it will show you a search box, floating search box. So here if I type snap, it will show you all the tools which is available under this name, under this keyword, whatever you are searching. That one, suppose if I want to create a cylinder, see over here the mesh, we have a cylinder name, this uh, search name in uh, two categories like the, the mesh and surface. So it will, uh, instantly showing you so if you click on that one it will be created so you can use this f3 tool also so it can be used in any editor like in graph editor also it will work okay fine now we'll see like the pivot points how to change the pivot points for an object okay so in this changing the pivot also we can use the cursor or else we can use the manual method also like so i just want to move this pivot point to this uh, vertex over here this corner this edge so for that purpose, uh, like in the uh, panel menu here, we got an options, right? So here these menu they have included. In older uh, 2.80 versions and all, it's not there. It, it's uh, added in 2.82 version, okay? So now I'm just going for uh, changing the pivot for this uh, particular cube. So for that purpose, go to that options menu and then enable this origins. So now you can see like the handle got changed over here, right? Means it's uh, representing the axis. So now it will be like, editable this pivot got editable over here so if i move this pivot over here and if i want to fix it over here on this position and i'm uh, just uh, 
particular object. So right now the pivot for this particular object has been changed over here. So if I give a rotation, the rotation will happen from here, not from the center of the touch. So now I just want uh, the pivot to this corner, right? So how to do that? Uh, select that uh, object, go for uh, edit mode, and then we uh, yeah already we have snapped our cursor over there, right? So no problem. Um, just going for shift S and then go for um, selection to cursor yeah over here selection to cursor so now we have uh, moved our pivot we have snapped our pivot point to this cursor over here which is already there in the uh, vertex so after removing that one just uncheck this okay now we have got our origin so the object will move from this vertex point and it's an object mode effect so like that we can edit our pivot point for an object fine so like this we can do and one more thing is like uh, object snapping without using a cursor. How to do that? Um, just adding our um, cylinder and then moving it over here. Just simply select these objects. So, suppose if I want to snap this cube to this cylinder, select the cube and then the cylinder and then go for shift S snap and then go for uh, selection to active. So if you click on that one, it will no. See right now it's snapping to the pivot already you have edited the pivot to this edge so it's rotated over here so like that we can work suppose if you want to uh, adjust that uh, edit the pivot point or else like doing revert constraints then you need to use this cursor okay so the next one uh, we will see about like uh, creating a motion trial okay creating a motion trial for an animated object okay for that purpose i'm just uh, opening the old version of blender because in new version i have I've got a bugs, so the mesh and all is getting disordered. So I'm just opening the previous version, uh, which we used in that uh, a post library in that one. Okay. So right now we have got a, a simple post to post animation over here. I'm just going to track this hand moment over here. Okay. So let us see how we can do that stuff. Okay. Right. So uh, basically, this uh, motion trials uh, in Maya we used to call motion trials right so by using that one you can easily trace the uh, arc movement for an animated object so let us see so select that uh, hand over here and then go for uh, uh, outliner so this is good uh, highlighted over here and then over here in the properties menu uh, make sure you are in this tab like the green color was an armature kind of icon. and then below our post library tab you will get an option like motion paths just click on that expand that and then here we have the frame range starting and ending so i'm just giving like 20 frames so it will track from frame number 1 to 20 okay and then we have an option uh, button called calculate so just simply click on that one so it will ask you like 1 to 20 and then a uh, big location is like tails and heads like that so just giving the default one click on okay so now we have got our arc motion path over here okay so it will show you like from the object the traveling path so suppose if i'm adding one key over here to make the arc uh, more flexible more arcy way so just editing that after inserting the key the motion trial got updated and i got some nice arc over here so like that you can verify your uh, animation arcs path and all everything so it will be helpful for animators and also if you want to edit suppose if, if i kept one more key uh, after uh, frame number 20 then you can give the end frame like any uh, some 50 frames or anything and then simply click on update paths so it will automatically update the path for your animation okay so now we'll see uh, how to import a reference images which is like an acting reference or uh, animatics to uh, blender okay so now um, i'm just going to like uh, show you like uh, some different methods which is available in blender for reporting the sequence so i'm just uh, going to active camera view. one is through the camera view on the camera view port itself uh, it will be displayed or a reference movie clip okay for that purpose um, i just uh, go to that uh, uh, active camera view and then select the camera from the outliner and over here in the properties uh, you can find the camera icon which is in green color just select that one and expanding this and over here uh, we'll have an option like background images okay something like that just expand that one 
and then enable that okay so just click on add image so it will open up this uh, additional setting over here so background source i just want a movie clip to be imported if you want an image still image then you can use that one uh, if you want a movie clips then you can select the movie clip over here and then click on open okay so i have downloaded some clip and over here handing with the dark proof just open clip now we have got uh, our uh, uh, video loaded on this uh, camera i'm just expanding this timeline over here now we can see that actual video clip is running on the background actually right and also we have our object 3d object over here uh, and we have some options like uh, adjusting this uh, camera clips and all so let's go back to this properties uh, camera properties window and then over here uh, they have given an option like uh, alpha setting the transparency alpha over here and then the depth so the depth is like uh, if you give the depth as a back then the image plane will go back side of uh, all the 3d objects so if i give a friend see it came to foreground okay so all the 3d objects are, everything is like a back so i'm just giving a back method and then we have a offset so we have a option for offset also and then we have option to scale that clip image plane over here and then we can move it to our desired location inside the frame you can keep it over here just go to the camera view and then if I click on lock camera to view so now it will be like this and over here under my image plane is going back so at that time I can give friend so like that uh, you can change the settings and you can use it okay so over here it will be played your video will be played over here so this is one method and another method is like uh, importing that uh, movie clip as a plane like it will be like a, some assigning some texture to a plane like that for that purpose you need to enable that uh, plugin so one uh, already pre-installed plugin is available you just open the blender preferences go to the add-on section and then over here you just type planes so here we have that plugin import export Im import images as planes okay just uh, by default it will be uh, not non-active so you need to activate that one by clicking that click on save preferences okay just close it so now uh, let us try like importing the same video as a uh, image sequence so here just go to file and then import so you'll get an option over here if you enable that plugin then you will get that option over here at the end images as a planes just click on that okay so we have that uh, video over here import images as planes so we have imported uh, video over here like a plane let us check but over here we need to enable this viewport shading okay so for me it, it was like a cycles and then go for shading mode so now we got a shades over here and you can see that uh, yeah. but the problem of importing that image sequence over here with the video is over here i am not recommend uh, this method to do because uh, you need to enable the cycle render so it will be like very slow like each and every frame it will be like cycle rendering so even this image also it will be like cycle rendering right now this object is like a renderable it will be visible on the render mode so uh, i am not prefer this method to import the images but anyhow i am telling you this is also one method and another method is like uh, uh, using the video sequence over here we have a uh, editors like a lot of editors so if you go to this editor tab you will get a video sequencer option just click on that so here we have uh, got a video sequencer timeline just go for add and then go for movie so here we have that uh, hunting with the dark wolf okay fine add movie strips so already you know like everything like everything will be loaded like a strips okay so i'm just uh, moving it so while importing itself you will get like a video video strip as a separate one and uh, audio is like a separate let us check like how to view the output um so for that purpose i'm just uh splitting this view over here and then go for uh, this menu over here sequence all right let's go for uh, preview or else sequence preview 
so this this view will be very good actually uh, you will get a uh, window like this or else you can go for only the preview click it over here and then split the view and then see concern so here also you can keep it like this in a separate window we can keep the preview so when you moving the playhead over here you can find out uh, the movie clip is playing over here so it will be helpful for uh, loading the animatics or else your acting video and uh, like cross check you can do these are the some of the uh, handy tools which will be helpful for animators i guess okay so in next session we'll see about like uh, manipulating mocap data okay see you in next session thank you